recorded live at the 2022 NACTA convention in Las Vegas. This is From the Chair. Here is your host, Mike Hamilton. Welcome to today's episode of From the Chair. I'm Mike Hamilton. I want to thank you for joining us. We are recording at the 2022 NACTA convention in Las Vegas. A great opportunity to sit live with athletic directors from around the country and you'll see these broadcasts over several weeks this summer as we catch up with some of uh, our dynamic leaders in this college industry from a broad spectrum of schools and ge geography and, and the like. So today I'm pleased to have as our guest Chris May, the Director of Athletics at St. Louis University. Chris, thanks for being with me. Hey, I appreciate it. Look forward to it and it's uh, great to spend time. No doubt about that. No doubt about that. So I, I love mascots, right? And uh, I, uh, we have a guy that works with us and he was touting here recently about his university having won the, the Director's Cup, Tufts, t right. the Tufts Jumbos, right? And then I was talking to him about the, you know, the uh, Santa Cruz Banana Slugs or whatever. You've got a unique mascot, the Billikens. I don't, are there any more Billikens in no, college athletics? There are no other Billikens. Okay, so. Uh, and, there, and there never will be. <laughs> okay. okay, all right, so for the uninformed, what's a Billiken? Well, um, there are many definitions of a Billiken, but at the end of the day, it's a true good luck charm. And we talk about you know a Billiken when you see it. And um, we take great pride in the Billiken and the good luck charm of, of the history and tradition of a Billiken, but uh, it's, uh, it separates us, it's special. Um, all Billiken Nation takes great pride in being a Billiken and, uh, and it's, exciting. it's an exciting time to be a Billiken. That's, that's tremendous. So you've been at St. Louis uh, SL, uh, SLU for a while now. Yep. Uh, from having been before that at University of Colorado for over two decades. Right. I want to talk about Colorado in a few minutes, but first let's talk about SLU and the unique situation of you're one of America's select number of schools that are Jesuit institutions. Right. And in a lot of places, uh, those are priest led. Mm -hmm. And I know that's not exactly your governance structure there at SLU. Right. Maybe walk us through how that, how that, what that looks like on your campus and does it affect decision making? How do, if it does, how does it affect decision making and a little bit of that history? Well, uh, SLU is a uh, Catholic Jesuit institution founded in 1818, over 200 years. And it's got unbelievable foundation of educating young people for, for, for decades, right? And so centuries for that matter. And so SLU, um, in being a Catholic Jesuit as an athletic program, it, it speaks to the core of what we do. And it speaks to the core of our values. We talk all the time about our values in our athletic program. We've defined our values. It starts with trust. We're committed to excellence. We care about people, all with the foundation of gratitude. All of those values align directly underneath that Jesuit value system. And so we're, we're so very, very blessed to be in this space, in the Jesuit education space. Um, Dr. Pastello, our president, Dr. Fred Pastello is our president, uh, is one of our greatest champions in making sure that everything we do fits in that Catholic Jesuit mission while at the same time competing like crazy. Yeah, so you, you I, I was fortunate enough, I spent 19 years at Tennessee, two years at, at Clemson, four years at Wake. You, I don't, were you somewhere before Colorado? Uh, no, okay. 23 years. Okay, so 23 years at Colorado and now 14 years yeah. at, at SLU. You, you realize that's a rarity in this business, right? So um, why has that worked in your career? Well, I, I've been very blessed. First, I was a student athlete at Iowa State went to uh, Colorado right from Iowa State. Um, I was major league blessed because of my bride. Mm. Had a great job in Boulder. We went to Boulder. Uh, I followed her. She was working for IBM, Joanne, my wife of 34 years today. Um, so we were very blessed to be in Boulder at a great time at that institution where it was just growing like crazy. And we played for two football championships and we won championships in other sports. And so as a young professional, I was lucky to get in at the ground and really be able to have access to a lot of opportunities. I, uh, you know, I, I got a lot of uh, experience in the corporate space at levels that I never would have dreamt of as we were growing cr like crazy and again, competing for championships. So I grew up in the corporate sponsor space, went into the external space, was working with some teams, um, started negotiating the, you know, external contracts. Yeah. We used to play the big football game down in Denver, fortunate enough to get to help lead that. And so I was really blessed to get access to a lot of 
different areas of our organization at, the, at a high level. And so it, uh, it was a very great time for me. And then, uh, then we're lucky to come to St. Louis. And uh, Joanne and I are both Midwest people. We, uh, I think we're destined for collegiate sports. We met as freshmen the first week in school buying football tickets okay. at Iowa State. And so um, we've been very blessed to then come to St. Louis where St. Louis is an amazing town, an amazing city that is big time supportive of athletics. Right. And, and of us. And we're, us being the only Division I program in the city, um, we've got great support in our city. They, you know, we've been there 200 years. There's great tradition at St. Louis University in our athletic programs. So we're, we're deeply ingrained in the community and it's a major benefit. And so I have been blessed beyond words could describe from an, an experience at, at Colorado to come to uh, St. Louis and we're, uh, we're very excited about what's happened, but we're super excited about the future. We are in a position that we've never been before. Well, and I, I want to talk about some of that in just a minute. I want to go back to Boulder for just okay. one moment. Tell me, who, who did you work with at, at Colorado as athletic directors? Well, Bill Meralt was the first okay. AD and Bill was great. Bill was, uh, ran the U.S. ski team. Um, he's a, a Coloradoan, was an Olympic ski racer out of Aspen and he had a great passion for winning a great passion focused singularly on winning. And, and, I, and I was already competitive before I got there, but to, to walk in and get to learn from Bill and what, the message he sent about focused on winning every day was a great, great benefit to me. Then I, then I worked for Dick Tharp, who is a, uh, who is a brilliant um, attorney, negotiator, helped me learn how to negotiate deals, how to always find ways to come to a win-win solution in the end and, uh, and a great athlete in, in himself. And then, uh, then I got to work with Mike Bone, who there might not be a better salesperson. Mike, Mike's ability to rally the troops and communities, I've never seen anything like it. He's a good and one, he's yeah. doing a great job at SC. And so I uh, was very blessed to work with three athletic directors who were very, very talented in their own ways. And, Hopefully I've uh, stolen some pieces from each as I try to uh, develop and deliver uh, a, a great program at SLU. Certainly, I'm sure some of those, are, those guys are mentors of yours. Are there other mentors that you've developed along the way as you've uh, developed your leadership path? You know, it's, it's, it's interesting. You're, I'm always trying to learn from key people. Right. And so, you know, I was fortunate I got to speak with Bill just last week uh, for a little bit. And, and there's been other people along the way. I, I, uh, I consider Joe Castiglione a, a, a colleague and mentor. He, uh, for a long time, Joe and I first met was he, when he was at Mizzou and uh, before he was the AD there. And he's been unbelievably great in helping guide what we do. Mm. Um, and each, each place I've been, there's been special people in Colorado that have really helped me. There's some really special people in St. Louis that I've been able to engage with that have, that have really encouraged, pushed and encouraged and supported our vision. And, um, and, and I learned a lot from some of the coaches, Bill McCartney, you know, uh, encouragement's the greatest motivator is one of his messages and, uh, and how you help young people and how you help staff how you encourage everybody around you and with that positive energy. And so I've tried to steal everything I can from the bright, bright people that I've been very blessed to be around. Yeah. And I've been very fortunate to get to do that. And, and I've been fortunate that a lot of people have really been willing to engage and open up the doors to me. And, and I, I don't know why that's happened, but I've been, I assume they just thought I really needed help bad, Mike. <laughs> but, um, you know, they have really been good to me. Yeah. And, uh, and I think a lot of the success, success we're having is because some real high level people have believed in our vision, believed in what we do, and that we can make a difference. And so, uh, again, I'm one of the most fortunate uh, ADs there is because I uh, have been able to stay places, uh, both as associate and now as an AD, but, and to learn and engage with brilliant people. And yeah, no helpful. doubt, right? And, and athletics is a door to, to meeting so many other folks and leaders who have been successful. You know, first of all, shout out to Joe Castiglione. His name comes up in these podcasts quite frequently, by I'm the sure way. I'm sure it does. Um, good friend to all, uh, so many of us, and has had an impact on this industry that's significant. I was thinking back when, as you were sort of rolling through some of those, those memories, uh, 
having been on the external side of the business at Tennessee, I, I developed a relationship with the CEO of Nabisco, I'm sorry, with Nestle and the CEO of DuPont and the CEO of Coca-Cola Enterprises, the, the founder of Pilot, you know, yep. those things. And, and I would say those, all those individuals were formative in my career growth in addition to those that I, that I came to know in athletics. And athletics was a door to meeting a lot of those other people, right? No question. And what I've learned is all the values we talk about at SLU and how we've really built it, is values that all those real successful business people have in their organizations. Mm -hmm. Tell me a great one that doesn't start with trust. Tell me a great one that doesn't commit to excellence. They work their tails off, the great ones do, as we try to. Yes. Not one that doesn't care about their people. And uh, not one that in the end, at the end of the day, that doesn't have an unbelievable foundation of gratitude. The, the true special ones that I've been so blessed to learn from. And there's, a, there's all, a million of them, just like you reeled off, from Coors to First Data to uh, Worldwide Technology in St. Louis to Edward Jones. You go on down the road. Every one of them have those similar values that it really takes to be great. And uh, so I've been really lucky to get to learn right, from those yeah. type of people. So you came, <clears throat> you came to, to St. Louis and... Um, you know, that's your first athletic director opportunity. So when you get your first opportunity, you have this notion of what it's going to look like, what it's going to feel like, the things you're going to do. Uh, you get hit in the face early sometimes. Um, and you, but then you sort of take a step back and you've, you really start to evaluate how can you really make an impact. You've been there long enough now to, to have an impact. Uh, talk a little bit about some of your the points of pride and the things that you've seen uh, over your years that SLU that you would say, hey, you know what, this coach or that athlete or this scenario really embodied what we're trying to create at SLU? Yeah, that's a, wow. That's a loaded question. There's so I much. I didn't tell you I was going to ask that I, one. You so. didn't. You, uh, didn't. you didn't prepare me. That's um, when we usually get the best answers, yeah, by the yeah, way. Yeah, great. Um, well, over 14 years you do, you see a lot. Um, when you really look at it, when I look back, We've won a lot of games. We went on a run with Rick Majerus, the legendary coach before he passed away. Yeah. Um, we, uh, we've made major movements in sports that haven't happened before. We've won championships and we had a volleyball run in the NCAA tournament. We've, we've done a lot of things, but probably what I'm most, well, how do you say most proud, right? The bottom line is you're, you're helping a bunch of young people have a great experience. Right. And you're watching these young people go through their journey from recruit to graduate to successful person. And so how does it get more fulfilling than, what, than being part of that, mm -hmm. right? And so you cut the nets down and you win championships and, you know, we're blessed. We're building. We just built one building. We're building another. And so there's all this momentum. But the true difference is how you deliver for those young people every day and what we've been able to do is clearly identify what our objectives and what those values are and it took us a long time to get there but today every student athlete in our program will tell you we're here to educate compete and build community every one of them every one of our staff knows those are strategic objectives and so what we've been able to do is get tunnel visioned on that and that's been our secret sauce that's been the whole deal mike um, everybody's rowing in the same direction everybody knows right when covid hit on march 12th 2020 in brooklyn when i walked into the practice gym and told our guys we're going home who would have known what was coming I sure as heck didn't have a clue. No one would have known. I thought it was a If anyone says they did, <laughs> yeah. Mike, no I, got, I got a great story. So I'm this glasses half full guy. I'm like, we're going to get through this fast. So we go home to work for a couple of weeks. So we've got this big chalkboard on, on our kitchen on, on the side of the refrigerator. Yeah. And I go, okay, we're just going to put one or two weeks on here. We're going to cross the week off. And we're out of this thing in like two weeks. We're done. Yeah. Yeah. Three weeks, four weeks. Okay, now we're going to do it by months. Holy smokes, six months, we do it again. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. Who would have dreamt we were gonna do that? Right. But what we did departmentally is we started having coaches meetings every week and we all committed to each other to our objectives and our values that we're gonna come out of this deal way better than when we started. Right. Everybody made the commitment. And I'll be darned if 24 months later, we hadn't raised $25 million and the community rallied 
behind our coaches that are doing great, great, great work. And our student athletes who are all committed to those three objectives. And so, knock on wood, um, we've been able to really move it with a real direct focus on those objectives and values. And so it's an unbelievably long-winded answer, but at the end of the day, our greatest success is clearly identifying who we are, what the playbook is, and delivering to those student athletes. That's been our success, mm -hmm. and that's why we're now competing at high levels. We had our soccer team get beaten in the eight last year. Our women have won four A-10 championships in our own in soccer. Travis Ford has our men's team in an unbelievable position going into this year. We're blessed to attract a highly, highly successful women's soccer or women's basketball coach in Rebecca Tillett. Ba our baseball team's won many A-10 championships since I've been there. So you go on down the line and we've had great success, but at the end of the day, it's because we've been real clear about where we're going and we have unbelievable great people yeah. in St. Louis. It's a community that believes in the Billikens, they love the Billikens, and they've been unbelievably supportive. What's the size of your staff? Uh, our staff, uh, probably about 75. And is, about, is that on par with most of your A-10 peers? Uh, we're a little smaller. Okay. We're a little smaller. Yeah. We're a little leaner. Um, but uh, we're lean and strong. Yeah. And uh, we've, got, we've got some people who have been there a long time. Yeah. that have really believed in our vision and what we do. And so uh, we've got a great group of people that I'm lucky enough to get to work with every day. I am, I am unbelievably blessed. Tremendous. So I want to talk about another transformational piece of your work. You, uh, you have just recently broken ground on the O'Loughlin Family Champion Center, I right. believe is the formal name. Yep. Um, obviously, that's a very student-athlete-focused student, fo student athlete focused facility. Um, the thought process behind that facility, what you're hoping to achieve with the facility, sort of the things that will, for, in your mind, be winning edge type elements of the facility. Well, um, Mike, the vision for the O'Loughlin Family Champion Center is to be a nationally elite basketball-centric program and to deliver all the services that all of the big dogs deliver, that the Power Fives deliver in football over here and baseball here and basketball here. At SLU, we're going to deliver it all in one facility, all connected to our, to our practice gym, to our arena for basketball, 50 yards away from baseball, 70 from soccer, and we believe we can do it as well as anybody in the country. So um, it'll deliver all nutrition, academic support, um, career support, sports psychology, spiritual development, all of those things in one place. You'll walk in and there's a sanctuary to the left when you walk in. It's super important at the foundation. Now, many people go, well, what, what, what's that all about? You guys are Jesuit, do you have to be Catholic? There's more than 30 faiths at St. Louis University. It's all about helping young people along their journey. And um, so the, the Champion Center has been, I, I've dreamt of it for a long time, but uh, I was coming back from a Final Four with Bob O'Loughlin. And, and Bob goes, okay, Chris, what's it going to take to really elevate the Billikens? What's it really going to take? I said, well, we're going to have to build a facility and the services that match what we just saw Gonzaga, what we know that Villanova is going to, what we know Georgetown's going to, and, and that basketball-centric being non-football playing. Right. We believe we can compete with anybody that doesn't play football. And so um, the vision is how do we do that at the highest level? And uh, our, our community has rallied around it from Bob O'Loughlin to I could go down list. Our, our community has uh, given like they've never given before. And uh, we're very, very fortunate that they believe in our vision that we can deliver for our student athletes. Because what it's doing already is it's elevating the competitiveness and the, it's raising the bar for our student athletes already. We've already got freshmen coming in, the, the shovels are in the ground, right. and we've got, we've got dirt all over the place. They can now visually they see They know it. because it's chaotic, <clears throat> right. but uh, in a quick 16 months, they're going to walk into a facility that very few in our space deliver. So you're hoping to, to get in there then the fall of 20... October 23. October 23. Right. Okay. Well, that'll be here before you know it. It will. Yeah. Um, soccer. So... Um, I don't profess to know a ton about soccer, but I am a soccer fan. I'm an MLS season ticket holder uh, for the Nashville SC franchise. 
Uh, well, you can come up and see a great stadium in St. Louis here uh, I've very heard. soon. I've heard. Not a better one in the country. I've heard. Centene uh, Stadium. Yeah, that'd be awesome. So your, your institution in particular has had an unbelievable history of success. And I want to talk about that institutional success, but I also think it's part of the broader messaging of that city. St. Louis, you know, I, I went to Clemson as an undergrad and we won two national championships in the 80, 80s. And a lot of those guys that played on those teams were native of St. Native of St. Yeah. Louis, right? So there's this yeah. long history of soccer, nationally relevant soccer out of the city of St. Louis. And then you guys institutionally have had um, 10 national championships, I think, Correct. right? Yeah. So how do you continue to pour into that program to assure it's continued success? And let's talk about the broader uh, soccer community in St. Louis. Well, it's, it's a great question because there is no question St. Louis is a big time soccer town. And many believe that really college soccer, uh, you know, began in a big part in the Midwest through SLU. And so we did want to win a bunch of championships early. Um, there's nothing better than sitting around and listening and hearing the stories of Billikens that have played in World Cups and Billikens that have been in the Olympics and all these pieces um, because it's such a sport that is ingrained in our community and in St. Louis University. There's no question about it. It is highly, highly important to us, both men's and women's. We believe we've got the best men's and women's combination head coaches in the country. We are thrilled with Kevin Kalish and Katie Shields. They are brilliant coaches in their own right. Katie's won four A-10 championships in a row. Kevin made a run to the eight last year, led the country in attendance, um, and really lit the match for our fans. We, yeah. uh, we drew more than anybody did in the country. We set a record, we set a Herman Stadium record, which you did 8,800 people for a first round NCAA tournament wow. game. And so it, it is unbelievably fun to watch the excitement around the sport of soccer. And now we've got St. Louis City FC a mile down the road in what will be the best MLS stadium in the country. Mm. Technology, the whole deal. They have done a great, great, great job. And, uh, and many of their, uh, the leaders and owners are partners of ours. And so it's a really tight knit community um, that believes soccer is critical to what we do. And uh, we're just very blessed to have two really good soccer teams to get to engage with it. No doubt. All right, well, so we're gonna bring it home with talking about the future for a minute. Okay. Um, you and I were talking before we started today just about the landscape of college athletics. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to think, I'm not sure we've had an athletic director from your league on the podcast yet. You may be the first. Apologize if I've had somebody else and don't remember right now. I'm getting old. But nonetheless, um, as it relates to your institution and your league and conversations coming uh, out of the Transformation Committee, how do you view the landscape of possible change from your chair? Well, um, you know, there's going to be some uneasiness, but I feel great about it. I, I, there has never been a better time to be a student athlete. With everything we've got going at SLU, there has never been a better time to be a Billiken. And in the next five to 10 years, it's only gonna get better. And so um, there were some inevitable challenges coming our way, big picture. I've been in intercollegiate athletics for a long time from being a student athlete myself to having children be student athletes to being in this game. And so um, I've seen a lot of evolution and I don't believe the sky is falling. Yeah. I believe the future couldn't be more bright. And we're gonna get through the, the it's, there are challenges, don't get me wrong, with change comes challenges. But I gotta tell you, the future, and, and I couldn't be more impressed and uh, just impressed by the, what the Transformation Committee's doing. They are, they are being unbelievably thoughtful about making sure everybody's voice is heard in this deal. Now, a lot of people will say, yeah, right. We'll see what the end result is. There's still going to be Division One sport being played. I will guarantee you, the St. Louis Billikens will be playing collegiate Division One sport for many, many years right. in St. Louis. Okay, it might look a little different, feel a little different, but Chaffetz Arena will be full and rocking for a long time. There's not a better basketball facility in the country. Dr. Chaffetz has been an unbelievable player for us. There, there's no better Herman Stadium. There's not a better soccer facility, and so. The future is very, very bright. Um, now, 
Are we going to have to deliver services a little different? I mean, the big conversation here at NACT has been mental health, no question. Yeah. And we're all trying to figure that out. And how do we educate our coaches? How do we educate our staff? How do we serve this group of young people even better than we have? And, but the future, again, it has never been better. Young people can go monetize their name, image, and likeness. Young people, the Alston, being rewarded for their academic support. All things that we've talked about in the industry for a long time, but never really knew how can we do this. Now we're able to do it. And, and again, um, to get to serve young men and women every day that uh, are real focused on getting a great education, competing for championships, give it back to their community. I can't think of a better business to be in, nor a better time to be in it. Mm. So encouraging. I really appreciate that insight. I, you know, you brought it up, so I want to go there for just a minute, mental health. Uh, in a lot of conversations, that is a topic. And by the way, sidebar, but sort of on a parallel track, I hear a lot of athletic directors also talking about their concern over the, the training, trainers, and the availability of trainers, and the, that the work hours and the pay are driving a lot of folks out of, out of becoming trainers. And so this, the mental health question, though, to park on that for just a minute, how are you approaching that? I mean, there's the notion of, um, you know, individualized care through on-campus services. There is the, the idea of having a staff member that's attached to your actual department that, that's an expert in that area. It's programmatic uh, work. Uh, it's, it's critical to the, to the future of student athletes. You can't, I mean, look, our entire country, right? But, but I'm, I'm curious as to how you're approaching it. You, you just hit it, our entire country and all of us. COVID has put the hammer on our entire country, right? And so how do we, from our staff, our coaches, I just sat in a great session where they said, you really can't lead unless you make sure your leaders are being taken care of. Right. How do we make sure our, our staff and our coaches have their needs taken care of? And then how do we help students? And so we're looking at it as a, uh, several pronged approach. How do we engage with campus as much as we can? And our campus has been unbelievable in engaging and supporting us in that space. Then what resources do we have to put directly into the deal? And then how can we train? How can we train our people? And, and, and taking what we have been doing and elevate that. We're, we're focused on how do we put more staff to really connect with student athletes all the time. Um, the big vision of the Champion Center is to put all those services in one place and make accessibility very easy for our young people. One resource we have that very few places in the country have is being Jesuit. We've got the Jesuit Scholastics, who are young Jesuits in training, who were aligning them with all of our teams. Our baseball teams had an unbelievable experience, as our men's soccer team, with young Jesuits really engaging and supporting our student athletes. So we look at it as a, as a big picture approach. Is it perfect? No. Is it easy? No. But it's top of mind for all of us. And so because it's top of mind, we'll do, you know, you are what you focus on. Yeah. An old Bill, another Bill McCartney line. Yes. And uh, we are very highly focused on how we do that better. And I think because of it, we'll, uh, we'll serve our students better. Great conversation, Chris. I really appreciate you being with me. All right, Mike. Thank you. I appreciate it. This is Chris May, the Director of Athletics at St. Louis University. I'm Mike Hamilton, your host for From the Chair. We'll see you next time.